Good morning. I'm Gail Anderson. This is Mentoring Moments for Moms. I'm here with my husband, Kirby. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's good to have you this morning. Hope you're having an awesome week. Hope lots of fun things are happening in your family and that you're having a great time with your kids. Uh, just want to mention that if you like what we're talking about today, would love for you to just tap on the screen, give me some hearts. Also, you can share this broadcast by just swiping to the right, and then you'll be able to share it with your friends. Good morning, everybody. So good to have you on here. Oh, my goodness. Um, today, we are talking a little bit about differing in our parenting decisions and how we navigated that over the however many years, 27, 28 years of, of parenting. Um, the first thing I want to mention is that when the kids are young, a lot of those decisions get left up to mom. We're doing all the day-to-day -day decisions. There's nothing really major, and so we do a lot of that. Now, as far as discipline, like in our household, it was difficult for my husband to come home from work and not seeing the kids all day, not seeing how they had been behaving or how they'd been, and then enforce any type of discipline. So in those years when they were like preschoolers, um, at least at the very beginning. And if my husband did not want to get up and enforce something, then I would go ahead and do it. And it didn't take him very long to realize the benefits of having consistency between the two of us and having us be on the same page with what we were deciding and what we were enforcing. And so he would start doing it when he was home and then I just took care of it when he wasn't. So, But the main thing I want to do today is get him started in just telling you how we navigated this over the years. Some of the techniques that we use, some of the things we did good and bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, Kirby? Well, uh, maybe we can come back to that point, too. That's okay. a real specific one, so remind me on that. I think the biggest thing here, and not only the example that Gail was just talking about, but just in general, uh, the biggest thing is we just have to be on the same page and it causes so much uh, confusion among the kids uh, stress between uh, the husband, uh, husband and wife, and wife <laughs> um, to just not uh, know what they want to do to begin with and then if they begin challenging each other especially in front of the kids Oh my gosh, you know, kids, they come wired in this world trying to pit mom and dad against each other anyway. And if you give them any kind of reinforcement on that, man, you are in big trouble. And so I think in general, uh, the overriding principle is, is come to an agreement on as much as you can up front in your parenting beforehand. experience beforehand. Yes. But we realize that as much as you think about anything, there are always so many other scenarios and situations that don't fall into your prep conversations and, and that. All of a sudden a child does something or there's some weird situation you never saw yourself in and you have to call an audible. And so whether that would have been Gail with the kids or with myself, um, you're gonna make a decision and there's going to be chance, there's going to be those opportunities where the other spouse, the other parent, does not agree. Can I just yeah. stick in something here? Um, especially with the firstborn, oh, when my we're gosh. navigating it for the very first time, that was probably the most difficult for us. Sure. And after we've gone through it a few times, we had things kind of figured out with how we would uh, determine boundaries and of all course. that. But it's still. No matter how much we did that, there were always brand new and unique situations that came up, yep. even down to numbers four and five in the family. Right, because you just have more kids, there's more situations, uh, your opinions change over the Life years. Life is different. Life is different. <laughs> and, and so it's this constant thing, but I think the overriding principle, again, is to, is to maintain unity, to always back the other one. And if you do have any kind of disagreement at all... Which I probably often did. <laughs> yes, but we, we would back the other one publicly yes. before the kids, and then we would discuss it privately. And if a decision to... Uh, if, if we came to a decision, if I had done something with one of the kids... And later on, Gail says, listen, I think that that was not enough. 
I think it was too much, whatever. And I say, okay, that's good. She's not going to go back to the child and say, hey, I talked your dad out of this thing or talked him into it. No, that's on me. They don't know that you guys had this disagreement. The parent who made that decision comes out and just says, hey, I want to talk again about what we talked about before. And I'm going to make a decision here. I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to amend it in some way. And this is the reason why. But the most important thing is, is when they try and pit you against one another, you stand by the other one. And if the child appeals to you or to the other one, you might be able to say, hey, I'm happy to talk with your dad. I'm happy to talk with your mom about this. But for right now, this decision stands. And unless you hear differently, that's the way it is. So bottom line, when they hear from one, they, are, they should be hearing from the other one. And you are shooting yourselves in the foot if you do anything less Especially than that. Especially when they're teens. That's right, abounding hope. Very much so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think sometimes that I tended to be a little bit more conservative and not want to allow as much freedom. Um, we run into that with teenagers, especially when we hit the concept of music. And my husband was more, okay, look at their hearts. Let's see where they're at. If, you know, if, if certain kinds of music are kind of on the line and it's not really doing harm, then let them do it. And I was kind of real straightforward on that. But in those kind of situations, I had to defer to him because I realized that I was very black and white, very by the book, and so I had to realize that the kids needed the grace that my husband would offer in those situations. Now, when the kids are really little, um, they will often do this pitting mom against dad. They will ask mom something, she will say no, and they will turn around, even with mom and dad in the same room, and ask dad the same question. And that has to be put a stop to right away. And especially right if away. you're not in the same room and they come and <laughs> they hit me up after they've already talked to you and I didn't know that they had talked to him and I made a decision. Oh man, as soon as I find out on that, I don't care if I would have done what Gail had said or not, it <laughs> immediately goes with what the first person says yes. and they're gonna get the riot act on, on this thing. You do not come and ask the other parent after you've already gotten a decision from the first one right. that you've asked. Now let me just talk about the discipline issue okay. and, and following through okay. on that and um, you know coming to terms yeah I was a little bit more lenient but I think that um, some of this has to do in our home you know Gail was with them all day long I mean we even homeschooled our kids and I think in general, moms are with the kids a lot more than dads if dad is the one Definitely. who is working outside the home. Now, there's many different situations today. Yeah. You both may work outside the home. This was our experience. The, the big thing was is that when I came home at 5, 5.30, whenever it was, man, I missed everybody. I wanted to come home to a happy home. <laughs> I, I didn't want to have to bust anybody. I, I don't, I don't want to have to do any of that. And so it was tough for me. If I came home and immediately Gail says, man, has it been a day you need to go talk to your son? And it's like, oh, come on, really? And so I'd go in and I'm just trying to smooth over the situation when really he has been a terror and he needs a firm hand. And that wasn't fair to Gail. And, and yet it was also tough for me. And so it really worked out well if Gail could kind of ease me into the situation a little bit and at least bring me up to speed so uh, yes, in those earlier years, I was too lenient. I was lenient with bedtimes. I was lenient with all kinds of things. But as I began to learn how that this was impacting her life and even their own lives, the kids, it wasn't good for them. Just trying to be the fun dad wasn't always the situation. The thing that's interesting when they're little is that the discipline, whatever you're doing, has to take place closer to the incident in order for them to right. connect the two. But as they get older, as they get in, say, the elementary age years, um, then you can actually wait, in fact, that threat of knowing that daddy's going to talk to me when I get home right. sometimes is very powerful. Even if dad doesn't do a terrible 
um, decision on disciplining, it's just the fact that the child knows, oh my gosh, dad, head of the family is going to talk to me tonight, so I'm in hot water. And back to an earlier point you alluded to, it, it got to the place that when, when we were both on the scene, there was this question of who was going to be the disciplinarian. And um, Gail uh, preferred, I think, mainly as a form of just relief because she would sure. have them all day. When I was home, to take that responsibility and take charge. And there were many times that I didn't want to. I, I just, I, it wasn't, it was just like, man, you're right there, just take care of it. But it was something that eventually I understood how important this was to her. And I think that it was important in our family too, just to see that yes, yes you obey each of us equally, but when we're both on the scene, I'm going to step up. That's the heavy. <laughs> I'm, I'm the default guy on this thing, and, and I'm going to step up. And it showed a way that I was always going to support, uh, support Gail and, and to back her and to relieve her of that. And they needed to know that when I was gone, they need to respond to her like they would to me. That's right. And if they didn't, then they were going to have to deal with me one way or another uh, when I did come home. So eventually we got to that. That took us a while yes. to get to that place. And we did have some uh, you know, ongoing tension over those things. And uh, again, so a lot of this stuff is, is just, boy, you, you press through. But that's our advice to you right now, especially for those of you who have younger ones, is to start off in this way as, as quick as possible because it makes life later on, even into the teens, as, as somebody mentioned a moment ago. That much That's better. That's right. If you guys have any questions, please go ahead and write them in. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for the hearts. That says you like what we're talking about. You're getting something out of it. You're learning something. If you go away today with just one thing that helps you in your parenting, then we've won. Then what we're doing is definitely worth it. Now, I do want to mention, too, that when I would disagree with what my husband had decided sometimes that had to do with the fact that he did not have all the information right. that I did yeah so I would need to just talk to him privately and say hey did you know this and this or had you thought about that if we take those into consideration we may want to redo this decision and that was the worst part about me just walking in the door yes and you were at wits end because it had been hard. going on for a while <laughs> and there just happened to be an incident and it was right away hey, I want you to go do this, and I felt like I was just acting without really having much information at all, and I, it really and put a lot of pressure on me, and uh, so you gotta take some time to... But it is so important that mom and dad are together on the boundaries, yep on the you know the repercussions of crossing those boundaries whatever the discipline may be if it's a you know some type of negative consequence a negative reinforcer whatever it is and i found it easy to talk to the kids beforehand about certain boundaries or rules so they at least understood how we wanted the family to function how we wanted the home to operate that was helpful now when they got to the teen years i know kirby mentioned this whole thing with new information um, or the kids appealing. One of the most important things when an older child appeals is that they really have to do it with humility. They can't come in and be all hot-headed about something and they have to offer some new information to the situation so that mom and dad can reconsider. If they don't have any new information to offer and they're coming in with just anger about something you've decided, then we really can't even yeah. be listening to them at all. That's what we call permission to speak freely. Permission to speak freely. And, uh, okay, uh, and that's kind of a whole other subject probably that we that you could yes. develop a little bit more, but there, that was part of the appeal process. Definitely. And now, uh, you guys have any other questions, please go ahead and uh, type those in so we can address those. Um, I do have to say, too, that I tended to be a little bit stricter, not just conservative, but a little bit stricter with the teenagers. And that did result in me having to defer to my husband more often because I knew he was more balanced. And sometimes I literally have to bite my lips and not say anything and think, okay, I know he's doing what's right and believe that God's leading him and he's made the right decision. And then after that, if we had bad repercussions from the decision he made, it was essential 
that I not come back to him and say, see, told you so, told you oh, so. It's <laughs> very helpful. But, but you know, it does underscore the, the importance of it is a good team, teamwork. It is. And, you know, I've, I've learned to trust Gail's opinion and, and her, um, just, just her viewpoint on this. And we're going to come at it from different viewpoints, but we're better off when we both are able to speak freely and calmly on this because she tempers me and I help her as well. And, and generally the best decision is somewhere in between. And, uh, and that took us a little, a little while to, to appreciate that and to sort that out as well. And I think that's really the key. You know, part of this is, is just getting together as a husband and wife, and that may be a real contention point. And so, you know, try to have as much respect for each other, for the other person's uh, perspective, and understand that if you're not with them all day long, you maybe can't fully appreciate, you know, the tension that, that's going on. And we also have to take into consideration not only the child, but the precedent that that may set for other children. Is this something, is this decision going to be sustainable? That's right. Will it, will it work every situation for every child down the Especially road? Especially when you have five. Yeah. And you've got more coming and they're all watching. So it's not always, be treated it's not same. always about what's easiest and what's most yes. convenient and what do I feel like right now? And that's where we can buffer each other out. And you really have to think more in terms of policies as opposed to hard and fast rules. Yes. You know, this is this is what we're going to do. But our main policy is, uh, you you see us each as equal. And if we disagree with one another, we're going to have one voice before the kids. And if we need to work something out, that's uh, behind closed doors. Yeah. But when we come back out, we're still one voice. Great. Glad to hear that. Um, she's saying it's a great point, really needed to hear this today. I was fortunate enough to have an active husband who was actively involved in the family and in child care. You may not. So you may, back, you may be back at that place where you've got to set the boundaries and you've got to follow through because your husband isn't in line. And the best thing I can suggest with that is to just be open with him talk with him about it, ease him into it, help him to see the benefits, but don't put pressure on him, but just keep that open communication and there's a good chance he'll come around. And you also might be listening today and you don't have a spouse in the home. Right. You are single it, you are a tough. single parent. And I do, I hurt for you, I understand you're in a totally different situation than we're talking about today. But if you can find a good friend who might be able to bounce ideas with you and help keep you a little bit more balanced because I think we all tend to get in our rut and believe a certain way and if we don't have anyone to discuss it with or bounce ideas off of it, we can actually get too much one Absolutely. way. So find somebody that you can talk to, that you trust their opinion, that maybe, maybe someone a little bit older who has kids, who you see what they've done and you appreciate and pick up some things from a mentor like that. And so. expect God to give you the grace Amen. to be able to do that. So Amen. that's just a little encouragement for single parents. Definitely. So thanks for watching and being with us today. If you're watching the replay, we appreciate it. All of the replays um, are on Periscope, but also all my, um, even my past scopes are saved on YouTube on the Mentoring Moments for Moms channel. And I want to thank my husband for joining us today and giving us his input. I hope to be doing that more often because I tell you what, this is a team effort. He was in it a lot. It's not just me. It's when you're at your best. Definitely, definitely. So you all have a great day, um, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.